Hey everyone, welcome again to Disability Landscape. I'm Charlie Bros. With me as usual, my co-host Mark Knudsen. Mark, who do we have today? Well, our next guest is some 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 someone that a lot of people will see, you know, familiar with, and we should probably be changing sides with him. But our guest is Don Shelby, former anchor and everything at WCCO TV, right? Welcome to the show. Once upon a time, <laughs> once upon a time. It's been uh, 11 years now since I retired. 11, okay. And I am messing up retirement completely. <laughs> if I knew that's what was coming my way, I would have kept on working. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean that because I'm doing uh, more work now uh, and getting paid absolutely nothing. <laughs> we, we know the feeling here. <laughs> <laughs> Very familiar yeah, with that. Yeah. <laughs> You're at the right spot, Don. Yes, yeah. All volunteers. <laughs> right I love all, it here. All volunteers yeah. in that. So, so um, Don, first of all, I want to touch on the fact um, not too long ago you suffered a stroke. And how was the recovery going, or how are you feeling? Well, let me just correct you. Uh, you're right in part. Okay. But since 2004, I have eight, eight strokes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, always in sets of uh, two. So four episodes, a, a slight one, and a major one. Oh, my. And it has played havoc on my brain. And in July, on the 17th of July, I suffered a uh, stroke that hit my temporal lobe. Oh. And that uh, stroke uh, made me mute for uh, two months. I couldn't speak. Did it really? Yeah. yeah. And I've had to go through uh, speech pathology and a lot of practice wow. just to try to get back some of my speech. And I'm about 85%, okay. I would think, uh, back to normal. But I have to work really, really hard. I walk around the house quoting uh, Shakespeare and doing <laughs> oh, do scenes, yeah, just to try to uh, get Exercise my language that. there and also okay. get my acquisition together because right. also damaged in my brain, uh, which I, I, just aside, I think a stroke is a traumatic brain injury. Yes. It is like someone has taken a, a 22 caliber weapon and shot you in the head. Yeah, so because you have to heal from all of that. And all your, the rehab is all, a yes. lot alike, I would imagine. Then, your huh? synapses have to grow again. You have to reconnect all these fibers that have been damaged. And I've lost two thirds of my cerebellum. And uh, so if you went to the dentist and they uh, stuck their procaine into your tongue, instead of sticking it in your gum, then uh, that's the way I spoke uh, starting in July after the stroke. And I can do it. I sound like this. Well, I had no speech, oh, I right. had no control yeah, and yeah. I don't at yeah, all. Yeah, your tongue is, yeah. 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 And so I've had to learn how to uh, redeploy my tongue and uh, it's uh, worked pretty well. I, I did not expect to be here uh, because uh, that week, I just went, my life is over. Yeah. Yeah, because th that was, because when I had first emailed you, we were setting up a, a time yes. to have you. And then you came, sent us an, e an email back saying that you had, you know, you had a stroke. And I was, I was kidding with Charlie because we've got our YouTube channel, Disability Channel Minnesota. And I was joking with Charlie. I said, you know, I just got this email back about, you know, Don Shelby having a, a stroke. Boy, you know, we got breaking news and we're such a news. <laughs> That's news true. Channel. We're such a new channel. Yes. We don't even know how to handle breaking news. <laughs> so we didn't do anything with it. So. <laughs> well, I belong on the disability channel. Yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, you now yeah, qualify. Yes, so I do. <laughs> you can always, we might have you back and help, you know, <laughs> me or Charlie <laughs> co-host one of the shows. Because that you you just got yourself into a mess. You just <laughs> you know that free that little bit of free time you had, you just quenched it down to oh, even less. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> Fortunately, we only shoot once a month, so kind gotcha. of gives you that kind of gotcha. reprieve. Gotcha. So uh, the two months unable to speak, um, wife 
cheering that, or <laughs> or was she happy for the silence? Oh, we, uh, she was so supportive of me, and That's great. Uh, also understood that I had a sense. I, I always look for humor, mm -hmm. uh, as everybody in uh, the community of people with disabilities yep. tries to find Way ways to. to cope. Yep. Yep. And I thought, well, uh, God uh, or the Almighty or providence or chaos or whatever you believe in that is in control of our lives has an incredible sense of irony, <laughs> an incredible <laughs> sense of humor right. that for uh, 60 years, I have been using my voice and my speech to oh, communicate sure. yeah. and says, take it out. So finally, I got one email. And I was, I'm down, of course. I'm uh -huh. feeling very, very uh, down. But I get an email from a, a person who I love. And uh, it said, after he had read the story, that I had had this uh, stroke and had taken my speech. Finally, somebody can shit get you to <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so, uh, and that, the first time I laughed, right. the first time I laughed was that. That's a good thing. That's yeah. a good thing. You know, just just before we went on air, we were talking a little bit about um, my hair. Well, I know <laughs> we we were doing it much so, sooner than that. <laughs> <laughs> But no, we, we talked a little bit about the people first language and, and you were just commenting like when you first started how you had to reference people with disabilities and that, how is that? Yeah, the, the language that we used were, was what we heard was old language, disabled people. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and so we had a actual in-service meeting with people who uh, were going to instruct us on how to uh, refer to individuals. And so we were told we can't say disabled anymore, couldn't say handicapped anymore. Right, right. Mm -hmm. We had to say uh, people with disabilities, uh, put leading with people. So we did, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, just in the hour that I've been here, I've heard disabled people 500 <laughs> times. I'm going to wonder, wait a minute, you guys are the ones making the rules. Do I have to go back and change everything again? <laughs> we're, it, not, we're, we're not good with rules here sometimes. Not it, our strong point, it, right, It's Charlie? very fluid with us. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Uh, once in a while, we'll throw out the word gimp. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. Not much. That's wonderful. Not, not much, but. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I'll probably have to bleep that one here. So. <laughs> yeah. Probably may. He's yes. the editor, so. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, yeah, you under uh, the language when referring to you know other minority groups, it it gets so fluid that it, it changes every five to ten years. Yes, and dealing with that in your profession had to been frustrating on, in how you did it. Well, to, to give you an example, uh, I have gone through in my career, I've gone gone through reference to Indians, sure, to. Uh, Native Americans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to indigenous yeah. people. And so uh, every time you write a script, you have to make sure that you are saying the word that is used today yeah. that for that audience today to recognize. And right. it's not always true that, uh, that people will all be on the same page. Sure. So right, right. Uh, people say, well, I, I was with the American Indian movement, they say, and I'm an American Indian. Okay. And uh, Native American seems like a softball on that. Yeah. And indigenous people, well, you can call us that, but we call ourselves something different. Right. And yeah. what they call themselves is really not as important as what the greater community right, right. should uh, refer to them as because there's a lot of weight in that language, indigenous people, as Certainly. an example. But we also went through uh, from colored people, that was language. Right. Yep. Uh, in fact, I saw a, a documentary last night on the assassination of Martin Luther King, and the word uh, colored had been previously used. Negro was used yep. to identify him as a Negro preacher. 
then it went to black, mm -hmm. then it went to African American, uh, and so all of that time was fluid, right. changing language to meet the needs of that moment in that audience that you were trying to right. reach. But did you ever get called out by, uh, um, you know, any viewers that said, "Well, now you're just being politically correct"? Yes, yes, all the time particularly among the conservative viewers who are saying that you're kowtowing to these interests. Yep. Um, and you have to kind of suck that up and say, well, if there is dignity in that language, mm -hmm. we're going to choose that. Because I, I want to try to explain something to you about journalism in America uh, that you really don't need to be explained to. but. Uh, Often, people in journalism are accused of being liberal, mm -hmm. which translates into uh, Democrat. Sure. Right? right. And so, the reason Fox News is so strong is they're trying to say all, all these other outlets are Democrats, so we're going to be conservative. Well, uh, there is a truth to that, but it's uh, small l liberal, and I, here's what I mean. The job of a uh, journalist in any, uh, whether you're uh, working for the New York Times, the Washington Post, or CCO, or mm -hmm. any local television station, your job is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Sure. That's the job. And the job is, in, encompassed in that, what that's shorthand for is we know where the power is. We know historically powerful things mm -hmm. have oppressed people, have tried to maintain their power at the expense of other people. Sure. And so when ADA came in, as, as an example, right. there were people who opposed that yeah. uh, to say, why should we worry about them? Yeah. We've got a lot of other problems to worry about. But the liberal, small l liberal, says, no, the job is to comfort the afflicted, mm -hmm. the uh, in, afflicted in any way, right. and to find ways to turn that into policy and law. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the great pieces of impetus behind ADA as an example, was the press. Sure. The press pushed on it constantly okay. on why people should be treated equally. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a liberal. That gets translated as a Democrat because many of the things that Democrats do support sort of a liberal agenda. Sure. Yeah. But the press should be liberal, always be suspicious of power. Okay. You know, and that's actually a good transition because what we um, invite you to come on to talk about is um, a former reporter who has passed away, but was at WCCO, Darcy Paulin, who um, was a quadriplegic mm -hmm. and was at WCCO. And did she, I guess when she first when she came to CCO, what was she involved in, I guess? She was a dispatcher. That's what I was going to yeah. say. I thought the, a dispatcher. Um, explain what that is. The job of a dispatcher uh, is in a big room, uh, 25 uh, police radios. <laughs> uh, you have to have very fine-tuned oh. ears, and, you're li and they're all going at the same time. So you're listening to uh, distress calls, uh, serious crimes, and then... Uh, locate that information, what jurisdiction it's in, and then you uh, make uh, assignments then to uh, photographers and reporters mm -hmm. to be dispatched to the scene. So she was very involved in that for, I think, uh, three and a half, four years. And then uh, some, some very wise people in the head office said, I think she can cover some stuff. She can. She's got a really smart, bright mind. Because what was her background? What was her education? Do you recall? Yeah, she did journalism. It was journalism, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's not like 
they were just oh no putting she, someone with a disability who they might think they're unqualified. Yes. She had the qualifications. She had the qualifications exactly. uh, on paper, but what she didn't have was any on-air experience. Okay. Right, right. Uh, so can you carry off? Can you communicate uh, with your language? And we knew she could because she was a great storyteller uh, just in the newsroom telling right, the right, story. Yeah, just the interaction at work. Yep. And she was uh, such a wonderful person. and. Uh, and so uh, she was elevated to a uh, reporter, and uh, th there was nothing she wouldn't tackle. Nothing. She would go out in the roughest situations, the worst situations, weather situations, tense, dramatic situations. And of course, in her love, she would, every big Vikings game and <laughs> every, right, that's right, every. Yeah. Yep. Every big Gophers game, no matter right. what the sport, she was there and covering that, and uh, she was just wonderful. I made a mistake uh, one time uh, when she was in the dispatch shack. You uh, sometimes act as uh, help to the main reporters, mm -hmm. and because you you get so much research, you can't get through it. You got to do a story that night, so uh, I went to her and I said. Uh, I've got a story two nights from now, but I've got a stack of information. Will you read this? Now, we know the story of Darcy Pollen that she was a swimmer. Oh, okay. Was that her? And, uh, was that her great injury? Is that how she got injured then? Fabulous. Swimmer. Okay, yep, good. Dove in the deep and broke her neck. Okay. And uh, became a quadriplegic as a result. Uh, and we all, and I was a competitive swimmer, so we always we had great so conversations. You about, had a lot uh, in common about there. swimming, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I said, will you, will you do? Will you go through this and find these names and see if they match? And no, it was just journalism stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, Yeah, absolutely, I'll do that. And I said, Well, I said, I don't have to do it for two days. I said, well, Don't break your neck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I went. Ow, oh, what did I just say? <laughs> I can't imagine that I just said to a person who is a quadriplegic with a broken neck, don't break your neck. <laughs> I said that to her. Did and she let you off the hook? Off the hook, she nearly fell out of her chair laughing. <laughs> she laughed so and her laugh, I can imitate her laugh, <laughs> anybody from CCO or anyone who had an interaction with her during uh, her career will recognize this laugh. Her laugh was an inside laugh, very, very uh, easy to. It wasn't ha ha ha, or your ex right spelling air. Right. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and I can do that sound in a group of people uh, who are like having a reunion of some kind sure. at CCO at CCO yeah. and I can just do that laugh and people will snap their head because they think that Darcy's in Darcy. the room <laughs> yeah. and and that laugh would would just permeate the newsroom <laughs> right yeah because you know f those of us with our disabilities yeah it, it's something because you know being Charlie and I both are in wheelchairs and we don't have legs or whatever yeah, we you always run into those situations where someone will say something they feel bad about. Yeah. You know, you know, step this way or whatever. Sure. Yeah. It's like exactly. It's you, like we're go not to you go to the doctor's office. Have a seat. Uh, uh, thanks. I already have one. <laughs> right. well, and and uh, another example of this kind of awkward situation you're in. Uh, I was at a meeting for Rondo Connect or whatever, sure. and uh, I met a uh, a woman. Uh, who had no sight. She could not see. Yep. And had been blind since birth. If okay. I, that's a, I don't even know if you were blind anymore, but uh, she would have been blind since birth. And uh, she came up and, and gushed it, it just said, I have been watching you since I was eight years old. And and I've heard things like that sure. said to me before, right. but so. never by a person who could not see. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> and I said, but I get it. 
Yeah. I get it because she was seeing me. Right. She had her view. in her mind. Her right. She mind. was seeing she a picture in her mind. Yep. 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 And yep. she has no idea what I look like, uh, but she recognized the voice, and from the voice she built an image, okay. and that's who she saw. And I just loved that idea. Yeah. 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 Well, so, that was, you know, the 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 era of radio, just radio. Yes. Programming, you had to use your your mind's eye, your imagination, to imagine what they were doing in the program. Which I think is the best form of media yeah. right now because it required participation on the part of the listener because they had to create, yeah. they weren't seeing uh, the house on fire. Right. Uh, the Herb Morrison, whose uh, coverage of the crash of the Hindenburg Oh, was yes. done on radio only. But when you see now the film oh, right, match, right, right. they also match Herb and his radio broadcast, which right. wasn't done. They were it was a reception thing. Here's somebody added years a, later the yeah. camera, yeah. but they took Herb and put it with him. Yep. And I still say that was the best piece of radio on scene reporting ever, yeah. ever, because he just broke down at, with what he saw. Yeah. And the commu the ability to communicate was enhanced by his inability to stay on script. Yeah. He was just, oh my God, oh my God, the humanity, the flames, the flame. And, and, and so you couldn't help but be totally impacted by this voice coming out of the box. And, and you could, you never, you didn't see the Hindenburg. You just only could imagine what that looked like. And Herb made that real. And, you know, you, you flash forward to 2001 and the, the towers going down in New York. And you had, you know, some, the, the anchors for the networks were showing emotion. Oh, yes. And a, a lot of people criticized them for that. But they're living through something at the same time, the same moment that everybody else is, and they're showing the same emotion that people around the country were feeling. And to it criticize was absolutely for that. proper yes. to show that emotion. Yes. For a uh, hundred different reasons. But sometimes pain, if you describe the pain that others are going through. And you have no vicarious sense of that. Right. Uh, I have seen hundreds of reports of people uh, on television standing up in front of a jet plane crash that killed uh, 65 people and just say 65 people were killed right, aboard yeah. this plane with, headed from here to here and uh, here are a few names of the people that have been. And, yeah. and they're just cold. Right. But the people who go, this is so hard to look at yeah. that the, the emotional impact makes it difficult for me to even explain what I'm seeing. Uh, that is absolutely proper yeah. to be a human being first, then be a reporter. And I think in that term, it um, provides the audience a way to connect with what happened. Yes. And but do you know what? When I said uh, be a human being first, then a reporter, that was Darcy. Sure. Darcy was a human being, full of all of this experience and knowledge of what uh, pain is. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, even though she felt none as time went on, and that's the reason she died in her sleep because an aortic uh, uh, valve. Uh, exploded because of a, uh, a ulcer, oh. but she oh, didn't right. even, had no feeling. She had, right, that, that's no feeling. So yeah. basically, she bled to death without knowing. No, uh, yeah, in that's, her sleep. What kind of accommodations um, did did CCO have to make? I mean, you know, just <laughs> being able to go out and reporting or. Did she get on set at times yes, too? Then yes, absolutely. And then and there were ramps built. Just yeah. ramps, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all it was. was. And she never required anything special. Uh, 
there, there was a uh, outfitted van, a uh, lift chair. Mm -hmm. Oh, she, oh yeah, she had that, and they traveled in that. And okay. the uh, photographers, all known to be kind of brash and tough people. I mean, they have to go into the toughest zones and right. be uh, yeah. in the most confronting of situations where they're in danger. Uh, to a person, they just loved Darcy. Because they wanted to make sure they get the story out. Get the story, and she would get it. And she would yep. get angles that other people wouldn't get. So if a person comes up in a chair and is talking to a person uh, who has uh, just lost their children in a house fire, mm -hmm. uh, there was something that would happen to the, the subject of that story who would recognize this person understands what I'm, go I'm going to say right. about right, yeah. my loss, because this is a person was, who, was uh, who has experienced loss. loss herself. And so she would get some of the most incredible uh, sound bites and interviews oh, really? from sure. people, yeah, that other people just could not get. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. He, she could connect with them on a kind of a grief level. Yes, will. and without ever mentioning, sure. never saying, uh, I'm uh, a disabled reporter. I am right. a person who uses a wheelchair. None of that ever gets mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, if she, when she would roll up to a scene, literally, right. we always call that rolling, rolling up to a up scene. To, right. But she would she roll up to a scene, <laughs> right. and uh, and people gravitate toward her. And so that's why she was such a wonderful, not only representative of CCO but a wonderful representative of the world of journalism because she could draw stories out like nobody else. How would it, I guess I'm just curious, how it would work for her when she had to go someplace and they were doing uh, a press coverage, so they had a group of, someone was ready to speak. What if that individual podium was someplace that was inaccessible? Did they move? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I guess most places when they're giving a press conference, I, I guess they're probably in an accessible space. I was just yeah. kind of curious. And so let's say you were at the uh, Hennepin County Government Center. Sure. Right, yeah. So uh, that was a simple move just to go in the elevator. Uh, right. You didn't have to take the escalator. You take the elevator up and then right, you right. get to the courthouse floor or whatever, whatever you were doing. But like out in the field type thing. If you're out in the field, then uh, the... Uh, photographers and producers would figure out a way. A way, okay. Uh, yeah. So if they had to the carry her, they would do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, I, I, I would um, imagine so. And, and disabled people, I mean, you know, through the years, you know, when you're newly disabled like Darcy was when originally, a lot of us use humor to deflect from people, you know, uh, not understanding disability. Was Darcy, did she have that kind of defensive humor? Well, I wouldn't call it defensive because okay. what I saw her, uh, what I saw, and I could probably analyze it. Mm -hmm. Now that you say this, I could probably go, well, she's doing that because she is uh, using this as a defense mechanism. Yep. But uh, I think she had all of that humor before the accident. Okay. okay. And that uh, she still found joy in her life sure. and uh, through her friends and made friends. All of her, anybody that met her was a fast friend mm -hmm. um, and would uh, go the distance to see that nothing got in her way. And she would accept help. And I, I really wish people would hear this more often uh, that this hasn't to do with uh, people with disabilities only, it has to do with everyone. Everyone needs help at some point mm -hmm. and you need to ask for that help yeah. all of us well if there was a a barrier of some kind whatever barrier it might be she would ask for help okay. and people would more than willing. Well, you got to speak up absolutely yeah can, I mean, that's can you give me some help on that boom <laughs> and uh, and it was nothing more it was like oh i'm disabled can you uh, help me no I just need some help getting from uh, that podium to that podium. Yep. You know, from that riser to that riser because they didn't think to put a ramp in. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, because my two kids sometimes are surprised 
when we'd be out, and if I didn't, you know, if I found something that wasn't right, um, sometimes you just get to a point you're just like, I'm just not even going to say anything. Yeah, yeah. But my, but my kids were always surprised. Dad, you're not going to say anything. I go, yes. you know. Yes. Sometimes you just got to. But, but most of the time, the kids always do. Okay, Dad. Yeah. Don't get too <laughs> vocal here. But if I were in uh, the situation you're in, I think I might be halfway between you and, and your kids. Mm -hmm. I might have a form letter. <laughs> a right. stack of yeah. these uh, because you have a right to have these accommodations yep. yes. take you into consideration and to uh, just address it to the place I want, the restaurant, wherever I was, right, right, yeah. and say uh, this this was uh, the, the washroom uh, was uneasy for me, the bathroom right. was uneasy for me. The, the there it, wasn't really uh, any thought. Bring it to their attention. Yeah, and say, and then and then say, here are the laws. Right. Yeah. And and just so informing people, and most people, in in those days, early days, would look at it and go, oh my God. They just didn't know. I'd, I'd better build a ramp. I'd, I'd better start right. getting some some things that will work with people because I I want that to be true, and I also want patrons to feel comfortable in this uh, situation. Yeah. Well, uh, Don, unfortunately, we're out of time. It's time to close the, re close the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Without mentioning my hair? Well, go for it, Mark, because you've got the same yeah, hair Yeah, I was going to say, where do, where do you like? <laughs> well, I will just say uh, this, is, this is my go-to-hell hair. <laughs> uh, a, it was started with COVID, sure. but the B is, People come up to me now and say, you need a haircut. <laughs> and I'll say, why don't you go to hell? Because <laughs> <laughs> I say with a smile on my face, because I had spent 55 years Trim where cut. an audience told me how long my hair could be sure. and what ties to wear <laughs> and what suits to wear and how to behave. And I'm retired. You don't get to tell me that anymore. <laughs> kind of like what, what David Letterman did. <laughs> exactly. Once, right. once, he re oh, he once he retired. Beautiful yeah. beard. Yeah, he's and got became that. Santa Claus. Yes. Yeah, yeah he got, he's exactly. got that beard. You went the other way. You let him. A ZZ top. I don't know who he's going after. <laughs> yeah. so, so. What, no, this has been good. Once again, thank you for coming in. Um, hopefully your health continues, you know, <laughs> improvement in that. I'm going to keep on fighting. All right. <laughs> That's all we can ask. I'm Charlie Bros, Mark Knudsen, our special guest Don Shelby. You've been watching Disability Landscape. We'll see you next time.